All right, guys, this week we're going to take a little bit of a different tack and look at some nonfiction in the form of Nassim Taleb's Anti-Fragile. Now, I'm going to start this off with a little bit of a caveat. If you're the kind of person who likes to do some research on the stuff that they're reading, maybe look into the author a little bit, maybe look into what the book is about, uh, particularly for nonfiction, I feel like that would be a little bit more common than for fiction. Um, I'm going to suggest that you don't look at any of Nassim Taleb's talks. I don't mean to be disparaging towards... Uh, Nassim Taleb, but I just had a conversation with another reader at some point who said that they hadn't read any of his stuff, but they watched some of his talks. Um, when I watch his talks, they are very difficult to listen to. Uh, he's got a little bit of a snarky attitude, but also I find that he doesn't really translate a lot of what he's trying to get across uh, very effectively in person and, and through uh, public speaking. I find that he's much, much stronger with the written word. And even if you're gonna go with the audiobook, it's not narrated by him, it's narrated by somebody else. And I think that takes a little bit of the sting of the snarkiness out of it um, while keeping kind of the intellectual meat of it in the text, which is definitely worth looking at because I think anti-fragility is a very, very important concept that we need to learn. If you've heard about uh, Nassim Taleb in the past, it is probably from his breakout book, uh, The Black Swan, which pretty much goes through, I believe, uh, big events, uh, seemingly random events that have shaped the course of human civilization that we can't really account for. And that kind of uh, leads and segues into anti-fragility because anti-fragility deals with how systems account for those changes and whether or not they can do so in an effective way. So what does he mean by anti-fragile, anti-fragility? This is kind of the crux of the entire book and it kind of goes through a lot of different sectors, comes up with examples, the theory behind it, why it's important and kind of how to set up things in ways to be anti-fragile so that you can benefit from chaos and disorder instead of kind of crumble underneath it. So in the book, basically he categorizes things into three, uh, three labels, okay? Um, kind of based off of the premise that We've really been seeing things under two categories and there's a third category that doesn't have a proper term to really articulate what it addresses and that term would be anti-fragile according to Nassim Taleb. So what are the three categories? Category number one is fragile and fragile things break under pressure. They need very specific conditions in order to remain stable. Um, a glass bulb is very fragile because if you disturb it in many different ways, it is going to break, it will shatter. It's a very basic kind of physical example, but just, you know, for introduction's sake. Um, things that are in the second category are either resilient or robust. And this is, uh, there's a strong distinction here between that and anti-fragile because something that is resilient or robust might be something that is say, uh, something that is made out of metal, right? Or even in the previous example, right? Plate glass will, will break very easily, but Gorilla Glass is more robust because it can handle more disorder, more damage, more chaos before it breaks or loses its ability to function. The third category, anti-fragile or anti-fragility, basically deals with things that benefit from disorder, that actually get stronger with disorder. And I think the distinction between that and resilience uh, or being robust is really crucial. And one of the reasons is because if we look at things as just being robust or fragile, things are always breaking down and it is a very burdensome victim kind of fatalistic gloom almost because no matter what we're kind of fighting this entropy that is breaking us down um, and and taking everything from a state of order to disorder so a few examples that Nassim Taleb kind of goes through uh, you know they range from healthcare to fitness to economics to government uh, a few brief examples for instance is very relevant to uh, today is immunology right uh, vaccines how do vaccines work Vaccines uh, largely work by introducing kind of maybe some sort of inert form of a virus. And then once our body receives that, that stimulus, it recognizes it and overcompensates by creating an immune response that is able to handle a much more real threat of, of a similar infection. In terms of fitness, we look at muscular adaptation. If you lift, let's say 50 pounds for a certain amount of reps, those muscles are gonna to start to break down and when they rebuild, they're gonna rebuild it in a process that will help you lift more weight than you originally started with. Um, this is one of the, the factors of muscular adaptation and it's why we can do things like progressive overload where at least until some point you can continue to increase the weight that you're able to lift because you're getting stronger. 
stronger. If your muscles were not an anti-fragile system, they would simply break down and then rebuild and they might actually rebuild slightly worse than before. His examples for economics and politics are a little bit more complicated. Um, he brings up Sweden, which I really enjoyed, or not Sweden, sorry, Switzerland in terms of a, of a political model that's a little bit more robust because it's less centralized. He talks about decentralization in general being more anti-fragile than centralization because when things are centralized, they become convenient. Uh, but then if, if that one central power ends up becoming corrupt, if it ends up breaking down, if it ends up losing any sort of the uh, principles that allowed it to function, then the whole system is going to crumble. Whereas if things are decentralized and one aspect uh, is, is fragile and breaks away, you have the rest of the system that can compensate and continue to thrive in that environment because of how it's set up. I really think that one of the important lessons from anti-fragile is to recognize how to build these systems and recognize that they exist in ourselves, but also in the environment around us and to really try to structure things in a strategic way such that when chaos is introduced, we are not fragile, we don't break down. A really good example of this is how Taiwan responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the reasons why they were able to get on top of it so quickly is because they were pretty heavily hit by SARS when uh, SARS came around in the early 2000s. Because of this experience, they ended up putting measures in place um, just in case anything else like that ever happened again, such that they would be able to take their society and, and continue on as quickly as possible. Uh, now having learned those lessons and being able to grow from it, that's a very anti-fragile response. So hint, hint, if this passes and we just go, you know, no more pandemic, we'll just wait a hundred years until the next one. That is, that is a very fragile response because we saw the fragility of so many of our systems, so many of our supply chains crumbled, so many of our uh, government infrastructures to protect people crumbled because we didn't have things in place just in case of an emergency. We were coasting on good times. We, were, you know, we weren't thinking about the worst case scenario. And it's not necessarily even thinking about the worst case scenario, but Black Swan tells us that those scenarios are gonna happen whether we want them or not. So we should build our systems accordingly, and not only just to handle the brunt of it, but in order to adapt to thrive uh, through those chaotic transitions. And I think this is an important thing to, for, for people to learn. Uh, you know, Miyamoto Musashi has, has that saying, uh, know the way broadly and you will see it in all things. And I think anti-fragility is an important concept because not only is it something that you can use uh, when evaluating society, how we should be setting up healthcare, our political systems, um, our economy, and things like that. But we can also look inside of ourselves and see how we can practice that anti-fragility and not necessarily see ourselves as like an organism that has to face the burden of existence, uh, however melodramatic that might seem, but instead see us as uh, a mechanism for growth in the face of adversity, right? The fact that this adversity is actually something beneficial to us is actually required by us in order to grow, in order to become capable, in order to kind of actualize and realize the capacities that we're born with because otherwise we become soft, we become, we become fragile, we become feeble. Um, and that's not something that we should aspire towards. So guys, if you have read Anti-Fragile, let me know. I kind of resisted this book for a little while because just by the name of the title, I kind of thought that I knew what it was gonna talk about. But the way that it went in depth, I found was much better than, than I initially anticipated. So I might've you know judged this book incorrectly when I first attacked it. Uh, if you've read Black Swan or Skin in the Game, please let me know. I'm particularly interested in Skin in the Game because a lot of things that happen in society that are very frustrating to see are because people get away with heinous crimes simply for the fact of sitting in the right chairs and wearing the right suits. And that's incredibly frustrating as a person. So if you have read Skin in the Game, let me know if you would recommend it because if I look into Taleb again, that's probably where I'm gonna go. As always, guys, if you like this review, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Most of all, it would really help the channel. And if you guys have any book recommendations you would like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments and I will see you guys on the next review.